This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. My guest today is Frank Miller. Frank is one of the most influential writers, artists and directors in comics, graphic novels and film and known for his hard-boiled storytelling and gritty film noir aesthetic. Uh, Frank is the creative force behind iconic titles such as The Dark Knight Returns, 300, Daredevil and of course Sin City. And Frank is with us today to talk about his upcoming NFT collection, which is based on the Sin City universe welcome to the show frank thank you very much good to be here good to have you here frank just before we dig into the nft stuff i'd love to hear a little bit more about the origin story of i guess your your style um and even how you describe your style like when you know batman the dark knight was returns was released back in 1986 you know, it was seen as, uh, well, a comic masterpiece, really, and the kind of the reinvention of The Legend of Batman and, and one of the first comics to uh, introduce a dark, a grittier vibe. Uh, so please pick up the story. You took that vibe further. Yeah, what, what's your style and how do you describe it? Well, when it came to, when it came to Dark Knight, um, I'd been, I'd been um, working along uh, with Klaus Jansen and with my editor, Danny O'Neill, on... Uh, on Daredevil comics for from for Marvel, and uh, you know we, we we you know we had a, a really good run, had a great time, and uh, over at DC Comics they 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 took note and uh, Dick Giordano, who was a Klaus Jansen's mentor and and was working real hard along with Jeanette Kahn to to uh, bring DC back to the, to the forefront of comics. Um, saw an opportunity with with uh, to sort of scoop the team up from Daredevil and plant it on Batman. Dick Giordano put it to me. He said, "I go to all these conventions, I and I ask them who the most popular character is, and they all say Batman." He said, "But Frank, we can't we can't sell the character." And I I kind of realized I just had given the keys to the Golden Kingdom. And and came up with a story where where Batman was older and all of that, um, and and you know we we had a we had a um, you know we had a real good run. Uh, Klaus and I really started started honing exactly what we're up to more and more, um, and you know telling more and more of the story of the um, story through the shadows in the in the in the um, as they played across the pages. When it came to Sin City, I was on my own, and uh, again I went back to old Dick Giordano, and uh, he was he was talking, always struggling along, trying to come up with my look for it. He he showed me some work by by an artist who went way back named uh, uh, Noel Sickles, and he said he said if you look at his stuff, he said he put the blacks in first and then put the lines in on top of them, so he didn't mean much in the way of lines because frankly. Frank, you ain't you ain't real good at lines, but you're real good at black. And so I I started doing it that way, and the whole look of Sin City came together, and that's the way I've been drawing ever since. Yeah, very nice, Frank, and I I, I love that uh, when you say uh, there's a, a story in the shadows, and uh, or put the blacks in first, and and you're right, that is very much the aesthetic of of Sin City, and I guess it's also that yeah the the film noir and and the old crime stories and and that kind of flipped moral code and uh yeah the low lives can be heroic and and of course the the woman were incredible mm -hmm. femme fatales right yeah well but i've got i've got to jump back for just a second and underscore how much of this was de was dependent on what i learned from class right that that i i learned a terrific amount because i could rely on the the utter confidence of his brushstroke and his pen line, and 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 he, you know he's a, he he uh, part times as a teacher now, and and I can see why because he taught me a lot when we talked about it, um, and and uh, and you know, how he thought, what kind of pen nibs he used, all of that, and uh, and you know he was one of the many people who along the way has, has 
taught me how to put together my own approach to craft. Where did the idea to do a NFT collection uh, based around the Sin City universe come from, Frank? So just tell us a little bit about uh, how that, that project has come together and, uh, and who you're working with. The, the, I'm working with, with uh, Gala and Concept Art. And uh, it's, it's, it's basically, I mean, it's based on the, the notion that, that um, which came together very organically, but that Sin City, more than anything else I've worked on, represents my uh, metaverse. It's, the, it's the, the world that I put together piece by piece that, that included all the stuff I like to draw and all the kind of situations I like to portray. And, and I, I wanted it to be a, a place where, again, throwing the word organic at you, where everything was essentially alive, including the guns and especially the cars. Um, and, and so, so that and, and to, to bring to organic life a world that, that, that I, I'd say I did... Um, in defiance of the more and more computerized feel of time. Yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense uh, then, Frank. And I wonder if you can tease us out, uh, even just some of the highlights uh, from the NFT collection or, or what... Uh, some of your uh, favorite uh, pieces are, and just just for the listeners, as I understand it, the the NFTs uh, will be, or the, the first drops will be available from uh, September uh, 29th, and and the details will be at frankmiller.io, and uh, if there is an email list, you can sign up there to to get all the details. But yeah, I mean, what can you tell us about what the collection uh, look looks like, Frank? I understand there's maybe 11 pieces some will be an open edition and some will be extremely limited perhaps even a one of one um yeah what else can you tell us well i could first first thing i tell you is that i i i, I had a whale of a time drawing these things nice um the 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 uh um i, I you know i started out of course with 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 with, with the the lurching mark and then and, and and he's 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 he he's a monster. He's gonna be beautiful. I mean the, the 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 crystal of him is just gorgeous. The the uh um you know it's 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 uh you know my favorite piece so far, I've gotta say. The the, the uh um and then let's see how many how many of these things did we do? Let's see. Yeah, we we've got a we've got eleven. Um so far, nice. and 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 uh, it's 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 safe enough. I think you're gonna like these things. And and Mar, you, you mentioned Marv, I think, and Marv, of course, is uh, one of the one of the many iconic characters from the Sin City universe, and he mm -hmm. was played by Mickey Rourke in in the film. Um, yeah. Sin City, it's it was obviously you know. Uh, iconic just in terms of the context of uh the graphic novel world frank but when it hit the the big the, the big screen uh with the film version uh that you co-directed with robert rodriguez you know it was uh i mean old and i'm old enough myself to have been uh able to see that first in city in the, in the movie theater and it was uh you know uh, very different from anything else it still is just because of it's that unique visual aesthetic and and the, the film noir uh, mm -hmm. style that you guys gave it what do you think is the legacy of of sin city oh I, I, i'm sorry i i i uh um i'm very cautious with the word legacy sure it's it's like i think that the one thing is that i i think that artists who tend to worry about their legacies tend to tend to be uh you know, that to tend to be tend to be looking too much in the rearview mirror. But um but it's it's uh I I I would hope that that in this and in and in everything that the the it would it would be in those movies in the comics and in, in all my work would be showing that you could that that there are should always be pushing against the walls and breaking them down when you can and finding out where you can move in new directions. 
because that that is where that is where worthwhile work comes from. Um, I think it was Einstein once said that that uh, in, invention was often just a collision of two previously unrelated uh, elements, and 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 uh, I think it's 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 really true that the, the, you take chances and and uh, and you know if you fail you fail and it's forgotten but if you succeed you've let you you've you've you know brought something new into the world very nice frank uh very very wise words and look well just as we start to finish off you know comics and and graphic novels and film storytelling in general you know they always present uh, different versions of the past, present, and future. But you know, in this case, you know, different versions of <laughs> utopia and dystopia. But what, what do you see in the world mm. today, and and looking forward? I mean, do you, do you think the world is is heading in a good direction or a bad direction, or are we on a, a on a good path or or not? <laughs> mm. You always have to aim for good. And and uh, hope hope to succeed. Yes. Okay. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that that uh, things look good right now. No. Yes. All right. But and but you know you, you do your best. That's exactly right. Well, uh, thank you very much for for talking to us uh, today, Frank. Uh, have really appreciated your time and um yeah really can't wait to see uh the rollout of the sin city nft collection so please just uh any final uh shout out i can't uh, wait either man <laughs> awesome <laughs> well, well we'll watch with interest can't wait to see it all roll out thanks very much for your time ladies and gentlemen frank miller thank you very much all right well there you go uh that was uh frank miller Fantastic. Very much a, uh, a short and sweet podcast uh, today. That's uh, simply because I had a, a very limited window with Frank. Uh, that's just how these things work sometimes. He probably had a few other interviews to do as well. Would have been fun to do the hot take round with Frank, but um, I have to save that for another time. Um, yeah, if you do want to get involved with the Sin City NFTs, Keep an eye on frankmiller.io and I'll put a link to uh, Frank's website in the show notes and also to those uh, two other properties, uh, Gala Labs and Concept Art House. As I say, links in the show notes. And if you've never seen the Sin City film, uh, I do recommend that you go and watch it. It's, um, yeah, it's quite spectacular. It is uh, a classic film. And, you know, my, uh, my partner is actually, she's a, uh, a, a major Frank Miller fan herself uh, because she's a, a, a big comic book nerd. And so when I told her I was talking to Frank Miller, she excitedly uh, ran to the bookcase and came back and handed me her copy of uh, The Dark Knight Returns, uh, which was, uh, well, by Frank, <laughs> by Frank in the 80s, published in, in 1986, and what I thought was interesting about this is uh, there's, there's a, an introduction to The Dark Knight Returns uh, written by Alan Moore uh, of, of Watchmen fame, of course, and um, yeah, I mean, it's I'm actually going to read you some of it just because, well, uh, it's pretty good. So Alan uh, Moore writes, and recall, this is a uh, you know, early, early to mid 80s, uh, when Alan is writing this, he says, Frank has taken a character whose every trivial and incidental detail is graven in stone on the hearts and minds of comic fans that make up his audience and managed to dramatically redefine that character without contradicting one jot of the character's mythology. Yes, Batman is still Bruce Wayne. Alfred is still his butler, and Commissioner Gordon is still chief of police. There's still a young sidekick named Robin, along with a Batman, uh, sorry, along with a Batmobile, Batcave, and utility belt. The Joker, Two Face, and the Catwoman are still in evidence amongst the roster of villains. Everything is exactly the same, except for the fact that it's all totally different. 
a Gotham City, a place which during the comic stories of the 40s and 50s seemed to be an extended urban playground, has morphed into something much darker and grimmer in Miller's hands. A dark and unfriendly city in decay, populated by rabid and sociopathic street gangs, it comes to resemble more closely the urban masses which may very well exist in our own uncomfortably near future. The Batman himself, taking account of our current perception of vigilantes as a social force, is seen as a near-fascist and dangerous fanatic by the media, while concerned psychiatrists plead for the reclusive and homicidal Joker uh, to be taken in upon strictly humanitarian grounds. The values of the world we see are no longer clearly defined in the clear, bright primary colours of the conventional comic book, but in a much more subtle and ambiguous tone supplied by Lynn Varley's gorgeous palette and sublime sensibilities. Yeah, so uh, could go on. I mean, it's just... Um, yeah, just a uh, really powerful uh, stuff there from from Alan Moore in uh, in the uh, yeah the, the introduction to the Dark Knight Returns, and of course that uh, the Dark Knight Returns would come to uh, you know a, a decade or two later uh, come to serve as a, a big inspiration for the Christopher Nolan interpretations of of the Dark Knight. Yeah, so. What can I say? If you haven't seen Sin City, man, that is a that is a film experience for the ages. So do go and seek that out. And well, I for one am very looking forward to seeing uh, what these NFTs consist of. So yeah, can't wait. Better leave it there. Thanks for listening, guys. It's uh, well, it's now five a.m. where I am here in New Zealand. Uh, I spoke to Frank about four done a, a nice uh, quick edit on this nice short podcast and I think I'm going to publish this uh, very soon so thank you for listening if you did make it to the end please do make sure you subscribe uh, to the crypto conversation in whatever podcast app you are using if you want to get at me just drop me an email andy at bravenewcoin.com this was the crypto conversation for a brave new coin thanks everyone see ya